Hello everybody, I thought I would do a very quick video blog of what's in my bag. Uh, I'm a Nikon shooter and I do photojournalism for a couple of local magazines and publications and for myself I'm a wedding photographer. So everything has to be relatively portable, um, easy to carry around. It also has to pack up fairly small because personally I drive a smart car and smart cars don't have the biggest boots. Okay, let's uh, look at the bag first of all. The bag I use is a Think Tank Airport International, uh, version 2. It is absolutely fantastic. It's beautifully made. It's got space for all of my equipment, um, flap on the front of my laptops, compartments all over the place for memory cards, bits and pieces. Um, it really is the bag to use. It's a roller bag. I prefer that to a, um, to a rucksack. Um, it just gives me a bit more sort of flexibility. I just, I really don't trust rucksacks. I, I feel very exposed having my equipment on my back where somebody could dip into it and, uh, and help themselves. So this is where I can see it and where I know where it is. A little less portable perhaps, but it's still a fantastic bag. Opening the bag up, you can see everything is fairly sort of compartmentalised, very well sort of separated. I don't like my equipment rubbing up against itself, so I do tend to keep everything in its own little compartment. We drop the cover off, you'll see um, pretty much all Nikon equipment, all Nikon glass. I use four cameras, um, two primary cameras, two backup cameras. Anybody who's done wedding photography, you'll understand the essential um, need for having backup equipment. Um, there's no, no point in turning up to a wedding with one camera or one lens. You've got to have the ability that if one piece of equipment fails, you very quickly reach into your camera bag and grab an alternative piece of kit. So, my primary cameras are these two bodies. These are my two D3S bodies. Uh, I bought these in December 2011, um, so I've used them now for three months or so. They are, without question, two of the most incredible bodies I have ever shot with. Um, the ISO performance is absolutely out of this world. I've shot in churches with an ISO of 4000 and come out with, with photographs that are just as good as the 300s would have done at 200. So absolutely amazing pieces of equipment. They're not the smallest cameras, they're certainly not lightweight. Um, you know you've carried them around for the day at the end of a session, but they are at the end of the day, I can't think of anything better. I know the D4 slightly outperforms them in terms of ISO performance. The D4 is also mainly um, improved in terms of video, and I don't do video. So for me, the D4 just isn't worth it. Um, obviously, for anybody buying new equipment, the D3, D4 is your only option. Fantastic pair of cameras. As I say, my backup cameras on my trusty old D300s. Had them now for about three years. Very, very good cameras. Um, still use them, still love them. Um, absolutely fantastic for, for backups. I also use these two cameras if I'm doing street shooting or going places where it would be less advisable to take the three D3S bodies. Um, I'd hate to lose either one of these, but um, if I'm going to lose a camera, it'll be these rather than the D3S. Okay. Everything has its place. Okay, lens-wise, you can see it's all Nikon, um, apart from one lens. Start off with the widest angle lens I've got for day-to-day -day shooting. Is my 14-24. G-series 2.8, um, absolutely fantastic lens, really really nice shot for the bride and groom getting ready. Um, it's, a, it's a sort of lens that puts people into their environment um, because it's so wide angle you get so much of the background in, um, but if you're very close to the subject they also stay quite prominent in the, in the frame. So really nice for you know, putting people into their, into their environment, a very good documentary lens as well. A little bit scary in the front element is very, very exposed. Um, I don't know if you can see that there, but um, I could imagine very, very easy to ding that front element if you're not careful with it. So it's a lens I use very, very carefully. Always, always put the cover back on as soon as I finish shooting with it. My next lens 
is a very nice, again a G series 1.8, uh, sorry 1.4 85mm um, G series lens. This for portraits, for you know, for photographing individuals, and for doing some street photography, um, especially nighttime photography, it is just the most fantastic lens. It is silky smooth, um, pin sharp in terms of focus. Perhaps not the fastest lens in, fo in terms of focus, but it's not a performance, not a sports lens. It's a portrait lens, and it does the job beautifully. I, I can't think of anything better. Again, beautiful if you can take a look at the front element. A beautiful front element, um, very, very exposed. Always use it with the lens hood on. I don't use uh, UV, UV filters because I do think that they detract from the from the overall quality of the lens. They certainly do increase the option of the possibility of flare. So I certainly I don't use that. It's a only a recent decision, but it's a decision I've come to after a lot of thinking. Perhaps one of my oldest lenses, um, and a lens I don't use very often, is the D series 80 to 400 millimeter, 4.5 to 5.6. Uh, it is an image stabilized lens, um, but it's relatively slow, relatively slow in terms of focus as well. Um, so I don't use it very often, um, but when I need that little bit, bit of extra reach for, for a very specialized reason, um, this is the lens I'll go to. So it's handy to have in the bag but it's not a lens that I use on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, but I'm still very happy to have it. I suppose the, uh, the other option would be to go to a much faster, more modern 400mm lens, but at the moment the budget can't stretch to that. My workhorse lens is this one. Um, this is the, the beautiful 24-70 um, 2.8G series lens. Um, what can I say? It's pin sharp from 24 to 70, uh, from 2.8 upwards. It's just an incredible lens. It's not image stabilised. Um, it's a very straightforward lens. It's that fast and that good. It doesn't need image stabilisation, especially teamed up with the D3S bodies. Um, a beautiful lens. Pretty much when I'm on an assignment, this lens stays on one, at least one of the cameras, I would say 90% of the time. So, a complete workhorse of a lens. Again, no UV filters. Um, I just have to be very careful with the front element. I always use it with the lens uh, with the lens hood on, uh, just to protect that front element from knocks. My workhorse long lens, beautiful piece of equipment, is the 2.8 VR2 um, 70 to 200 millimeter lens. Amazing piece of equipment, just the same as the 24 to 70. It's pin sharp right the way through the range. Um, totally delight to shoot with. It doesn't hunt, it focuses very, very fast. It's a precise piece of equipment um, that does the job I needed to do. Marvellous in terms of catching groom, bride and groom's faces. I can feel the frame uh, with their faces. If I'm at a concert or something like that, I can feel, feel the performer's face. Into the, into the frame. So absolutely fantastic lens um, and again pin sharp. My other lenses I don't use quite so much. I have 50mm, everybody should have a 50mm prime. Um, very, very good for street shooting, uh, general photography out and about. Um, you need to reach something quick, that's the lens to go for. Um, relatively cheap, um, I think about three, three hundred and fifty pounds. Um, very, very good lens, very simple. Under there is a lens that people either love or hate. I love it, but only in moderation, it is the 10.5mm fisheye. Uh, it is a DX lens, so I would use it only with the D300 bodies. You can get some interesting, quirky shots with that, but I wouldn't overuse it. Next to that is a Tamron 90mm macro lens, um, again 2.8. It's a lens that I use for detail shots. So at a wedding I would use this to capture details of you know the, the bride and groom's rings, the flowers, um, various bits and pieces throughout the, the uh, throughout the ceremony, but um, 
the nice little lens I will hopefully one day replace that with the Nikon equivalent but for now it does the job and it does it perfectly and the last lens I have in here if I can get it out is a little oops very very tightly packed in there we go is the 35 millimeter 1.8 8 G series lens, it's a DX lens again used on the D300s, um, just the same as the 50. It's a fantastic little lens, it's quick, it's simple, it works, um, very, very sharp results with it. So, just a useful lens to have in there. Obviously, with all of these lenses, it gives me a great range. But going back to the point of backups, um, if I really had to, I could afford to lose any one of these lenses and reach for an alternative and cover it from a wedding point of view. Um, it would obviously cramp what I can do, but everything is duplicated, everything covers and overlaps. So, you know, worst case scenario, I lose a lens, I drop something, I've always got an alternative. Okay, that's a quick sort of look through my camera bag. Um, there will be a part two to be done shortly, which is a look through my lighting bag, which has numerous flash guns, pocket wizards, gadgets, gizmos, orbis, ring flash, you name it, it's got it. But that's my what's in your bag. Thanks for watching.